Revelation chapter 5, John sees uh, this scene unfolding in heaven. It was being it was being shown to him things which must shortly uh, come to pass. And in the Revelation, in uh, chapter 5 of the Revelation, there be, begins this opening of, of the purpose of God. And throughout the book, there's, there's three different sections of God's purpose being opened. There's the, the seven seals that are open, and there's the seven, uh, the seven trumpets um, that are open, and then there's, there's one more seven that I'm failing to, the seven bowls, seven bowls that are open, yeah, or that are poured out. And each, each one of these are, there's a seven because it's complete. Whatever, everything God does is complete. It's, it's, it's perfect. Um, and so in chapter five is the beginning of the purpose of God being, being opened. It's the seven seals. It's the book. John saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side, but it was sealed. It was written in, but it was sealed, meaning that it was a, it was concealed. It was closed up. That's what that's what this means. That it was sealed. Nobody could penetrate. Nobody could um, could open open this up. Nobody could find it out. And this bothered John. It bothered him so bad. He said he, he wept that no man was was found that could could open the book until one of the angels said, "Weep not. There has been a man found." And in verse um, verse nine, it says they sung a new song. That's the uh, the 24, uh, el the four beasts and the 24 elders, they all had harps and golden vials full of odors, and they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now the angels join in this proclamation in verse 12. It says, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. That is, all of these creatures in heaven, the four, um, the four beasts and the, and the 24 elders and all of the angels, they were all, they were all proclaiming this, that Jesus is worthy to open the book. Amen. No, no other one was found. The, the angels couldn't open the book. The 24 elders couldn't open the book. Nobody could open the book, but Jesus could open the book. He was worthy to open the book. That is, the word worthy means deserving. He's deserving to open the book. That means it's right for him to open the book. It's due to him to open, open the book. It's suitable. This is the way it should happen. Jesus opened the book, and it should happen. He should be the one to open the book. It, it wouldn't have been right for an angel to open the book or one of the four, the four living creatures to open the book. It wouldn't have been right. See, everything in heaven is done right. There's nothing done out of order. There's nothing done unjustly or under the table or by sleight of hand. Everything is above board and is, it's right. That means it's holy. <laughs> that means it's done righteously. Jesus was, that is, Jesus was qualified to open God's purpose. Amen. This is not a book that, like a, a, a book of notes or a, a book of poetry. This is a book of God's purpose. Yeah. Is God opening yeah. his, his purpose that he is going to accomplish in the in the earth. Jesus was qualified to open God's purpose. Jesus has found he's able to reveal what God is going to do and what God is doing. And this is this is true of in in every aspect of the kingdom of God. Jesus is worthy to open it. Well, the laborer is worthy of his hire. Right? We're taught this in scripture. Does the matter this is, this is a matter of righteousness. The laborer is worthy of his hire. In fact, James reprimanded the people for not paying wages. Does these, these wages, are, they cry out against you, the wages that you withheld. The laborer is worthy of his hire. Well, so much more, Jesus is worthy of this work. He's worthy of it. He's, it's right that he be the one to, to open the book. The scriptures also say that the, the masters should be counted worthy of all honor. Those, the servants that are in the yoke, count your masters worthy of, of all honor. All, it's right that you, that you honor your masters. They're worthy of your honor. You're, you're in service to them, and so they're worthy of your honor. Well, Jesus is the master of all masters, so how much, how much more worthy is he of all honor 
and glory and power and blessing and all this that, that we read in, in Revelation chapter 5. Think about it this way. If John the Baptist said he was not worthy to stoop down and unlatch the sandals that Jesus wore, and this is John the Baptist saying he wasn't. John the Baptist, who was uh, the greatest in the kingdom of God, and John the Baptist, who was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb, he wasn't worthy even to unlatch the sandals that Jesus wore on his feet. If John the Baptist wasn't worthy, then certainly no other man is. But Jesus is worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals. How much more worthy is Jesus to do? The Lord, the scripture says, the Lord is worthy to be praised. We have this uh, sounded several times, and this is one of like David's favorite, favorite phrases. It says, the Lord is worthy to be praised. You find this several times in the scriptures. That is, the Lord's, his name is deserving to be praised. That's what worthy means. It's, to, it's deserving. It's right that all praise be given to him. His name, the Lord is worthy to be praised. It's not possible to ascribe to too much praise to God, to say too much about God, to give God too much. It's not possible because he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise. His name is deserving of it. His righteousness is suitable to be praised. See, remember in the Revelation, the angel wouldn't let John fall down before he get get him up. He said, worship God. John, the angel wasn't worthy, but God is. Amen. And so the angel redirected. He didn't say, oh, no, don't worship anyone. No, he said, worship God. Amen. Because his name is deserving. His righteousness is suitable to be praised. Yeah. And he will. He, he has that in heaven now. See, and the earth is the only place where people don't know this. Yeah. Heaven knows it, and the demons that are in the under the earth, the place, places under the earth, even they know it. It says the demons know that there's one God, and they tremble. Yeah, right. In the earth is the only place that this isn't known. So that, that's why we got to make it known. Yeah. That's why we talk about talk about this thing. See, the Lord is worthy to be praised. Grace, grace is due the praise of man. It's right that everything that man has be be given as praise to God because Amen. grace is worthy. The grace of God is worthy of everything that man, what do we have that we haven't received? Yeah. Everything that we have, we've received from him. Amen. And so he's, he's worthy of us giving. Amen. Jesus is worthy to open, open the book. So this is who we're coming to remember at this table, the one who's worthy. Yeah. If he's worthy to open the book of God that's sealed with seven seals, then how much more worthy is he of us remembering him, of us serving him, of us loving him, of us abiding in him, of us following him, of us hearing him. He's worthy. He's worthy in heaven. Certainly he's worthy in these lower parts. See, the gov he's worthy. The government's been put on his shoulders, and God hasn't regretted doing it. See, he's worthy. He put the government on his shoulders, and the kingdom is advancing. On his shoulders. That means it's right that it be on his shoulders. The kingdom hasn't suffered any. It hasn't, hasn't retrogressed, hasn't digressed because the kingdom is on his shoulders. It's right that it be on his shoulders. He's worthy. He's fulfilled the law and the prophets. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't any, any uh, um, scurrying before Jesus died. Of, oh, there's, there's a few prophecies that we haven't fulfilled. we gotta, we got to... Make sure and cover all the bait. He fulfilled all the law and the prophets. Amen. Is it that because of who he is? He was faith. He's faithful to God. He's worthy. He fulfilled all the law and the prophets. He, he's, the scripture says he always did those things that please God. He always did. It wasn't something he had to tie, tie a string on his finger to remember. <laughs> he didn't have to put sticky notes, you know, around the house. The Jews had to, they had to put signposts, you know, on the inside of the door and outside of the door and where they laid down and where they went in the field, put the signposts all around them. Why? Because it wasn't in them. Well, Jesus showed up. He fulfilled the law and the prophets because it was in him. Yes. It was in him. He's worthy to open, open the book. Now, not only is Jesus revealing the book, he's not just providing the information. Jesus is doing the work. Yeah. He's opening the book and he's doing the purpose that's written Amen. in the book. Yes. And in fact, as far as the scriptures go, they're all written of him. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is not just reporting like third party, show up on the scene and tell us what's going on. Jesus is making the goings on Amen. go on. Mm -hmm. He's worthy to open the book. He is, 
He's the captain of our salvation. That means he's out in front. He's the one that has the plan. He's the one that has the vision. He's the one that has the power to move the forces and to put down the forces and to bring in the forces. He's the captain of our salvation, and he's worthy to open this book. He's the great high priest that is over the house of God. That's why he's opening the seal, opening the book, and, and loosing the seven seals, because he's been put over the whole house of God. Yeah. And when Jesus wraps up this whole purpose, then he's going to hand it back over to God, that God might be all in all. And when he hands it all back over to God, we want to be in that that he's handing over. He says, Behold, I and the children which God hath given me. He's going to hand over this great house back to God that God set him over. He's going to finish the work. He's going to do it all fully and completely and perfectly, hand it back over to God, and we're going to be handed when God hands, when he hands us over back to God. So we want to see when we come to this table that he's worthy. We want to proclaim that he's worthy. When we come to this table and remember him and honor him at this table, we're agreeing with heaven. Jesus is worthy to take the book and to loose the seals and to do the work. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, making your purpose known to us, for making your will known to us. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to open it up to us. We thank you for this table that you've given us, a table of remembrance and a cup of blessing. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, teach us by your grace as we come to this table uh, to drink worthily and to eat worthily, to remember uh, him that is worthy. Help us, Lord, to cast off and to lay aside uh, every, every hindrance and every, uh, everything that, anything that is vain, anything that is a weight, uh, anything that, is, that would distract us, and help us to rem remember Jesus and to fellowship with him. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.